Hi everyone. We have seen till now uh, the basic building blocks like how to create a project structure and all those things, and then followed by how to use the properties at various levels. We have defined properties at various levels like project level, test suite level, test case level, and global level, and then we try those properties at various levels into the uh, request, soup request, and then we trigger the soup request and we verified the response and everything and we also validated how to uh, how to validate the response how to validate the assertions how to validate the response using the assertions and all those things now let's see the next part of the series so we have covered up how to use the properties from various levels and now let's see how to create a sample so you have for calculator application and you can request the server using data from properties so this also we are covered up we have already covered the calculator application and we had sent request for add with hard coded values and multiply with the non hard coded values that is the properties using the properties and then we need to cover up the assertions so basically we covered basic assertions like uh, soap assertion we have seen scheme assertion we have seen not fault not so called assertion and then we will be looking at valid http status codes xpath match assertion and uh, sla time response assertion so this is what we are going to cover up so we are going to cover up the assertions as of now and then we are going to look it into uh, some concept of dynamic uh, i mean the ha how to handle the dynamic values what are the dynamic values how it will be coming so that will be taken up so basically we will be uh, using the salesforce application for this uh, for watching how to see how the value dynamically varies and all those things so for that we will be using the uh, salesforce application so let's get into details let's begin from the beginning again until we get hands on so first we will be creating the project naming is Visual file is already mentioned how to get the visual file from. Go to Google and search for calculator stuff, and this is how we get it. And we click on service description, and this is the visual file. This is the visual file path, which is hosted on the web. And give it over here. Click OK. Our project is created with the interface. This is the interface which defines all the operations in the and the messages which we need to pass and then we will be creating the test suite day 3 test suite and once the test suite is created we will be creating the test case once the test case is created we need to add the soap test or the rest test or any of the test tips you can utilize it. We want it to work with the REST APIs, we want it. Then we can add the REST test, the REST request or SOAP request, or then we can use the property transfer request or the Groovy script step. Whatever we want it. We'll see all these things, one after the other. So SOAP request. Now we are working with SOAP, so we are going to utilize the SOAP request. So now let's see. On divide operation let's close all of this thing so basically I forgot to say one more thing for every operation we are doing it's a very best idea to save as soon as we are done Save all projects, or else we'll lose everything. So 
so let me see over here let me just in so ui so let me see create one more folder Let's save it here. Okay, everything will be saved in the form of XML. You can copy the same thing and you can distribute it over. So where we are, we are at divide. So now what we are going to look at it. So we are going to look at the decisions. So just let's see. This is the XML format. This is the request format for device and wherein we will be using two values int A and int B. We need to pass these values and then we will be getting the response. So when we pass the empty values without uh, giving any proper format, it is an integer format we need to send. But if we send like this, we will be getting an assertion error. So this is the assertion error we had seen earlier. So it says like it is not a valid input. Input string was not in the correct format, and so the passing int it was not number says you can see so fault. So this session got failed. So now let's see by modifying it. divided by 5. So let's simulate. So result is 2 and all the assertion got passed. And how much time it took? Response time is 479 milliseconds. And how many bytes we received? 335 bytes. So now let's see other assertions, how to add some more assertion on top of this. So before that, just let's go into the response and see what are the tags available. So what are the tags available? Divide result is the tag available. And how many times it is available? It is available for one time. So the count of the tag is one. And the tag that is available is divide result. And the value of the tag is two. So we'll be asserting these things, these all things. And as we mentioned already, so we'll be looking after what for all the assertions. We'll be asserting for HTTP status code and XPath match assertion. As I told, we'll be validating whether the tag exists or not. Also the count, also the value. And then uh, other thing is like the response time, how much response time. Within how much, how much time we are getting the response. So assume like the developer will be saying like uh, within 30 milliseconds I need to receive the response. So we need to check whether it is coming in 30 milliseconds or not. So we need to assert over that. So just let's assert. Here is a place to add assertions. Adds, if you can see over here, when you mouse over over there, it shows add an assertion to this item. Click over there and then you can see various assertions available. So now let's just see valid status code is the one which we need to utilize first. So valid HTTP status code. So click on that, click add. And what is the valid HTTP status code we'll be receiving? General, it's a general idea. 200 is a valid HTTP status code which we'll see. So enter 200, click on OK. If 200 is received, this success till it is paid. Next, you can click on that. Now I want to check 
whether this tag is available so it exists or not so let's see uh, let's say what developer will be saying is like I had created a new tag in this XML in this system just verify in the response this tag is available or not or this tag is repeated two times or not or this tag contains the value this much or not you are giving this input and this tag receives an output of this much in the response verify these things so how do we do that we do using xpath match assertion let's see where it is so here it is xpath match assertion click on add so we need to declare the xpath which we wanted to verify so how do we define an xpath slash class star it defines any colon followed by the tag name and what is the expected result okay just let's let us see what we can do is we can just click on test I'm not giving anything in the expected result and click on test and what it says is like xpath contains comparison failed for xpath expecting something actual was two. so we are what we are doing in here if we are validating the value so the value is two so the value was two this is what we are, this is what is expected so we didn't mention anything in expected results so this is the actual so put it like three so we wanted to fade it and we wanted to see just now it says you are expecting three but the actual which you received in the response is two so it's failed so in order to pass we need to put as two so test it response matches the content so this is one so this is for value match using xpath match assertion so we wanted to create some more what is that we wanted to see whether this tag exists or not first of all again go over there sorry the content xpath match click on add xpath match one or we can give some other name close just delete it in order for our understanding we'll give a better name sorry mm. Verify tag presence. Verify tag is present. Okay. So we need to use exists exists of single quotes followed by the export pattern. Divide result. So again, click on test. So it says it was true. You are expecting nothing. So mention it as false. Now test it. It says you are expecting the element should not be present, but the element was present. So what we need to have it true. So all negative things we are doing and checking first. So give it as true. And now it. So response matches the content. So it exists. It says that the element you are verifying for it exists. And now, finally, we wanted to see the count of the tags. The tags will be present only once. Click 
verify the account click ok and count is a function and then give it in single quotes and the xmath expression star defines any element under that element what is it divide result is the tag and then click on test it says comparison failed because you are verifying nothing with one so the count was one and you are given anything for the expected result so let me see say the developer says the tag should be repeated twice so i'm testing whether it is available twice in the response or not click on test oh you are expecting two two times the tag to be present but it was actually present for only once so the assertion fails so let's modify it into one and just you can see response matches yes the tag is available for only once so we have been done with xpath assertions and now we wanted to see the response time assertion so earlier we have seen something like i think 479 milliseconds is the response time now mm, okay we will do something greater than that first one so the response time we are going to give it as 200 milliseconds and verify you can see it is failed so i did it give it as 500 milliseconds you can see directly if you do 200 it turns right 500 and click ok the assertion is passed to the green indicator let's, oh, let's do some 350 fail just let's run one more time and see response time is 844 milliseconds so we are kept it as 350 milliseconds it fails so you it is 500 and trigger it once again so it took 363 milliseconds so it passed give it as some 300 milliseconds now you see what is the response time 267 milliseconds so it's passed so see all the assertions scope response is passed schema comparison it is in compliance with the schema soap schema and it is not there is no faults in the input forward or anything so there is no soap faults and then the HTTP response code is 200 it is success yes xpath matched so the value is matching the uh, value in that element tag is matching it's two and then tag is present and the tag count validation is success only one tag once the tag is available and the response time is within whatever the response time we mentioned so this is how we validate so this is all for this particular session so that's it next we'll be uh, going on to the salesforce application how to set up an all those things earlier we had already seen it once more one more time i'll be explaining how to do those things and then we'll be going on how to see the values which are changing dynamically and how to work with those dynamically changing values using the property transfer concept so that's all thank you